Hello to viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about magnetic bearings. So let's dive right into it. Now first we have to understand what exactly is the problem here. Well, bearings reduces friction, so that's a good thing, but here's the inherently is still a contact. What does that mean? That simply means there are places where you are making contact with. So your resistance can go down. Let's say your resistance value at worst case scenario was 100. Uh, you can brought it down to let's say, uh, let's say 10. That's awesome. But it's still not zero, nor as low as can be. So in many places, that still represents losses. Now, most places, losses are not big enough where it will warrant any other technology. However, think of it this way. Let's say this loss is 1% of your total system. Now, think about that. Let's say that loss is happening on something that is producing 1000 megawatt of power. Let's say steam turbine power plants. 1% in that scenario matters a lot as in that's per hour loss you are ha having to deal with think of it that way the amount of money you will make if you can save that so in many places uh, that low contact uh, resistance is just not good enough you want it to be even lower then we come to another aspect some places that are sensitive let's say you are processing gases for some industrial application or some medical purposes or whatever have you you are dealing with something that you do not want to contaminate you cannot have things that have lubrication in them for example many of the petroleum industry deals with things that if they touch uh, basically lubrication it will go boom so you do not want to be in a scenario where like things are volatile and you have a freaking lubrication nearby so many places will flat out that shall not have weight lubrication flat out it's not a lot you shall not have lubrication so many scenarios flat out many bearings would be like no now assuming these two things are not an issue for you you're like dude i can bear with the losses and i can deal with the lubrication most people can and that's why you see bearings most places but there's still one thing that you have to deal with that you do not like is high wear and tear like what's the part that wears down in your equipment bearing that's it like i can tell you most of you uh, uh, people who are dealing with pcs there is a they have a fan and most of the things they break over time and what exactly breaks does the electromagnet fail no have you even heard of the scenario no the electromagnet fail no it's the bearing that fails that's why the motor starts uh, you know uh, acting around so fundamentally it has very high wear and tear factor and that inherently translates to a lot of hassle think of this when you're talking about maintenance in one farm what exactly they are doing what exactly they are trying to deal with they are trying to prevent this so that's the whole thing. Even if you can deal with the losses, even if you can deal with the uh, messy lubrication, you still can't deal with the fact that it, these puppies do not last very long. So introducing magnetic bearing. Now, what does it do? It's inherently just an electromagnet that is doing magnetic levitation. That's all you are trying to do here. Same way a magnet levitates off the track, you are trying to do the exact same thing. Now, primary reason why people are so interested into this is that this puppy supports idiotically high RPMs, as in most normal equipments are uh, around 1500 RPM. Some high RPMs, uh, let's say 5000 RPM, 10,000 RPM. That's good. That's like bearings are like, uh, we are pushing it, but like we can manage that. 20,000 RPM, you're really pushing it, but bearings can still manage. The moment you start to exceed that RPM, people are like, yeah, good luck with that. Like, yes, you can utilize bearing, but it will not be very efficient. Heck, the losses will go idiotically high. For example, when people were developing early stages of uh, what we call uh, flywheel energy storage, they wanted a RPM to be ludicrously high, as in like, uh, let's say 100,000 RPM. Can uh, things achieve that? Yes, it's just the deal. The moment they disconnected, the bearing ended up eating all the energy. So you have to utilize magnetic system because it has zero point of contact. So many places, many scenarios, you have to be in a situation where it's like, nah, I want zero contact, not, uh, you know, low contact, zero contact. So magnetic bearings are utilized for that. And higher the RPM, the more beneficial this puppy becomes. For example, you are dealing with a turbine and you want to build a system that is much more efficient. So maybe you want to build a, basically, many new power plants are gas powered, as in natural gas powered. So they want to have a turbine that runs at higher RPM and a generator that can utilize that RPM directly. Awesome. What's the weak link then? The weak link would be the bearing if your bearing is wasting multiple percentage of your energy what's the point of doing it so that's why people utilize magnetic bearings now generally there are two main types when is active and passive passive simply means utilizing a permanent magnet and uh, active means utilizing electromagnet but generally you will never find one of these you will always find something that is like a bit of mix of between active and passive and most places you will find active i will explain it later 
Now, what is the workings of this puppy? It works on surprisingly simple thing known as eddy currents. Think of it this way. So you have a copper plate and you drop a magnet. The magnet will never hit the copper plate at full speed. So the faster you throw, the slower it will become. It's like it will act like a magnetic cushion. So that cushion is happening because of eddy current. It will work on any metal. Of course, it will work differently. Like the copper will have much more of a cushion effect compared to steel, but steel will also have an effect. So fundamentally, all conductors behave this, uh, be, uh, basically behave this behavior. I'm saying basically exhibit this behavior in those sort of scenario wherever you have rotating conductor you can utilize this puppy and that's the whole point rotors are generally made out of metal metal most of the time are flat out good conductors so utilizing this puppy we can have electromagnets around the system that is providing the force now when you are talking about electromagnets you have to understand what will happen if you have an electromagnet to just turn it on it will just stick it up like yes there will be a repulsion for a while but you can uh, end up in a scenario where it's unbalanced and even if you created a scenario where you have two electromagnets everything is awesome you are talking about a spinning mass spinning mass don't like to change direction uh, like okay why the heck i will change direction here's the earth is rotating so everything is changing direction that's one thing i did not think about it's like that's why bearing has to handle ludicrously high axial loads it's like even if the bearing is going like this awesome because it has to deal with like this because the earth is rotating earth is spinning so fundamentally you have to have scenarios where you can handle that and you can have earthquakes like minor earthquakes i'm not talking like something that is like a richter scale eight or nine no no, no. let's say richter scale one or two that's big enough for if you have like 200 ton turbine spinning and that starts to vibrate yeah good luck you're building so in those sort of scenario you have to understand you have to have a feedback loop and this feedback loop will have a lot of position sensor depending what they want to utilize they could have inductive sensors they could have optical sensors whatever they need to to basically read where the rotor is exactly and i mean idiotically exactly and idiotically precise and fast enough also for example uh, in many of the modern systems let's say bare minimum you're gonna have is 10,000 hertz as in your sensor is reading the position of the rotor within the ma uh, margin uh, whatever the range may be like let's say two meter it can read like within the tenth of a millimeter where it's like yeah it's that's how it's moving and it will do that at least 10,000 times a second and that's that will be considered a basic bit setup like good setups can easily go up to 30,000 hertz so be mindful when you're talking about ludicrously high rpm turbines they need this sort of uh, correction and when you're talking about like you know earth slowly drifting it or minor tectonics movement this will allow the electronic uh, electromagnetic system to respond to it it's like i got this i got this calm down calm down now this allows it to be amazing in one thing it acts as a dampener now dampening anything that is spinning is very difficult because spinning mass can enter, uh, enter a state which we call resonance basically start to vibrate and it will self amplify now this is an issue really horrific issue with uh, hydro dams they have a turbine which is big jungles amount of metal awesome everything works about that but here's the deal they have a rpm now they have a green rpm that is like let's say 1500 rpm they are like awesome making energy efficient everything is fine and then they'll have a okay rpm which is like let's say 500 rpm they are like okay we're good we're good they're not awesome but we're good but here's the deal there will be a transition rpm which like there will be a red alert the moment you go into that rpm in the power system it's like you have 15 minutes to exceed this rpm that would be let's say 800 rpm the moment you go into that every control system in your power plant system will go simply please shut down loads on other so it can go higher or reduce the rpm to that. you do not want to be in that yellow zone you you can cross it also obviously you have to cross it if you want to be in the green zone but you do not want to stay in there and accidents have happened as in tragedies has happened and dams have been destroyed because of this because of some malfunction poor maintenance and like the rp uh, basically the turbine stayed in that yellow zone vibrated too much it destroyed the whole building and in case of dams that building is a dam so damn so fundamentally people like this idea of dampening system it is very useful in hydro dam they are like shut up and take my money just for this then we come to i have explained so many amazing things does that mean everything is awesome with this no it does have one consequences it requires still a bearing you may like wait a minute at building a bearing everything is awesome then why do we need bearing well you are dealing with something complex complexity is the enemy of reliability so auxiliary bearings are there for two primary purpose purpose number one shut down because uh, eddy current does require uh, what we call uh, basically motion if you have relative motion awesome the moment you stop the motion you will end up magnetizing the material and it will not have the effect that you are looking for it will just act as a magnet and it will get stuck one way or the other you want eddy currents that's why you have to have a what we call a motion if you do not have motion this will stop working so shut down in cases of shutdown you need to have a system where it's like okay normal bearing take the load 
then we come to fail safe aspect you are talking about electromagnets that means it has coils coils can short out sometimes or most likely scenario is that you have a basically super complicated uh, controller box that could have malfunction heck worst case scenario you can like literally destroy your power plant because of a you know firmware update it has happened by the way so not destroyed as in like whole building went up but this is like they had to shut down one equipment so and these things generally have uh, battery backup to make sure that even in case of primary power failure this will still uh, you know support it as long as possible so be mindful that's why you have to have auxiliary bearing so consequence of that is like even if your uh, efficiency utilizing uh, magnets was like let's say 20% efficient you will only get 50% efficient in real life simply because you will have a, a bearing that will not act as a main load bearing but it will still be there so consequence would be loss of uh, basically efficiency then we come to aspect it's idiotically expensive because of the uh, reliability factor needed these things go through extensive testing extensive uh, uh, maintenance and all that is which ends up bernoulling their causes cost a lot so yes there are uh, basically magnetic bearing that are small enough that can be utilized in house for example uh, many indian homes have water pumps water pumps uh, do uh, consume a lot of energy so saving even a little percent there will matter and you may be like maybe it's not too big enough because these things are big no you can find high end cnc machine that have like spindles that are like this small few horsepower and they have magnetic bearings because at ludicrously high rpm it justifies it so question becomes what we can expect in the future well at this point in time more and more people are working on what we call permanent magnet bearing system yes electromagnetic system does work but permanent magnet will remove one of its biggest uh, weakness basically you will not need a fail safe equipment so uh, the reason why we don't do it today right now is that low load bearing capacity for example i've provided a video down below where you can see a dude uh, displaying a siemens equipment which is trying to rotate a basically rotating element that is around one uh, ton by hand let that sink in like one ton by hand simply because now can that be done in normal bearing not easily it can be done but not easily simply because bearings generally require a bit of load to be smooth enough so it would be a bit difficult so low load bearing capacity so for light elements permanent magnet bearings are being utilized today but like if you want to talk about power plants they are not strong enough where they can have heavy loads then we come to another aspect this also suffers from the same issue is that if it is utilizing eddy current it requires motion so zero rpm it's not gonna and does not have the benefit of electromagnet where it can switch and create a magnetic field so that's another aspect so people are solving it by having the shaft itself having a magnetic unit and the root uh, stator itself also having a magnet if you both have magnetic unit then you can have a, a system where it can slow down shut down safely without needing any other thing so that's what people are working on right now achieving a system where you can have 100 percent magnetic uh, bearing without needing an auxiliary system yes these bearing will wear down now you're like how the heck this can wear down it's simply because vibration magnets do not like vibration b temperature these things are uh, dealing with high energy equipment so even waste heat of one percent will cook them slowly over time and even if you can remove both of those things you still have to deal with the fact that magnets lose their magnetic over like one percent per year and that's very exponential think of it as a one percent of hundred percent is just one percent but one percent of 99 percent that's a bit bigger than one percent that you originally had then one percent of let's say 90 percent is even bigger so that's why like exponentially loses power so you have to replace them over time but again you will not have wear and tear. like you buy it and in many equipment you like to buy it and forget it don't worry about maintaining it and uh, many people are already utilizing this sort of technology and other magnetic bearing technology in uh, large industrial chillers simply because those are expensive equipment maintenance are even more expensive so removing maintenance justifies the cost it's like yeah i'm buying this expensive equipment that's going to be running for 25 years how many maintenance you have to do on that puppy so if you can remove the maintenance awesome and then uh, another aspect would be it will make it simpler reliable and cheaper so all of the three faults of current uh, electromagnetic bearing systems can be fixed by permanent bearing system if it's done uh, well enough basically right now we do have some limitation because while we do have neodymium magnets the very high grade neodymium magnet generally do not like high temperatures and i mean high as in like anything above 70 degrees celsius and you are dealing with steam turbine or jet engines yeah 70 degrees a bit too low for that so there are some uh, limitation but people are working Working on it to fix this exact issue so this was my presentation on magnetic bearing hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please give the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching